Good morning and welcome in for another video myself, Darren. I'm a class one HGV driver and this is my truck, the Nemesis. I do record Monday to Friday and upload at 7 p.m. on YouTube Monday to Friday so you guys can have a little bit of an insight on a HGV class one driver and what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's absolutely a terrible day like yesterday was a nightmare but Easy, but a nightmare, just a long, long, dragged out day. And today is going to be another long one because we're going down to Maidstone today. So about a four hour drive, five hours, and I'll be definitely staying out for the night. Doing the vehicle checks, make sure the tire grip is all okay. We've got very good tread there, you can see a little bit better there. Uh, the tank is not damaged, there's no leakages, etc. Wires are all okay on there, um, tires are all okay. Uh, I've already given it a proper check already, but well, this is just for your video's sake. So, open up this by the way if you want to get a good look at the tires. All you need to do is scout strap, pull it out, pop it up, done. And you can see both wheels then, nice and easy. But yeah, it's all good. Tires are all looking good, lights are looking good, mud guards, etc. No damage whatsoever. So I'll quick pop into there. And the Ad Blue tank is all okay, no damage whatsoever. And yeah, let's get inside. First things first is get that little heater on and get it cranked up. Go put it on 25 for now because I'm jumping in and out of the cab. Keeps the cab nice and warm then because it's bloody cold outside, it is. Got my night bag with all my night gear packed in there. I've got a towel, pajamas, spare clothes, etc. Um, I've got food in this one, and this one is my fridge. Oh, I've got an energy drink in there already, so there is another one. Don't worry, that's not mold or anything, that's just tissue. When I tried to clean it, it was iced over, so I've had to let it defrost a little bit so we can give it a wipe down again. Which does remind me, actually, I need to give it a little bit of a wipe. That's a little bit better. I can never get the temperature right on these things. So I normally have it about a five, but if it goes any colder than five, it'll start to freeze up on the sides. Like around here, you start getting like a bit of frost and stuff. And that's how I got the tissue stuck on it last time. Trying to clean that. Loads all secured. Trailer checks are all done. Everything's all in good condition, as always. And now we're just going to set our destination. Leave the yard. Quite a bit of distance for our first job though. 10 past five, I'm due to get there in pretty much five hours and it might be a little bit more than five hours really because traffic going past Birmingham and this is including the toll road at Birmingham which I'm going to avoid but I am going over Dartford so yeah it might change a little bit but five and a half hours give or take might be six hours to get down 250 mile I'm just glad I've got plenty of energy drinks so hopefully it'll keep me going <music> Currently half past eight at the moment. Uh, I've been driving for about three and a bit hours. Uh, I've stopped over for a quick 15 minutes over at, I think it's Arley Services on the M40 southbound. So I'll pop in here, get myself a nice little Greg's coffee, perk me up, and I'll go get a bacon butty as well. Why not? And then I'm going to carry on driving down the M40 for a bit more, uh, probably for like another hour or so. And then I'll take me 30 minutes and that's me driving time covered as well. Plus, it's always good, isn't it? Stretch your legs a little bit after a few hours driving. First time I visited this one as well. So it looks all right, pretty big. Yeah, it's quite a big size, actually. Got a KFC, Greg's, The Great Smith, Burger King. Hmm, not bad. I feel like I'm more in an airport than like a service station. Really weird. Yeah, it really does. That was like an airport feel for sure. Ah, that's what I'm here for. 
Good old Greg's. Can't beat that. £3.40 for a latte and a bacon and sausage balm. Greg's, give me a sponsor, because you know, I've been promoting your food all day long. Always will be. Hmm. It's got a really big truck space here as well at this services. It's bigger than the uh, Lima service station, that's for sure. A lot nicer, that is definitely for sure. I've still got 112 miles to go and I'm probably due to get there for about quarter to 12 at the moment, still need to take the over half hour break. I've got an hour and a half driving time and the time is now quarter to nine. So it's, it's gonna be close whether I actually get there or not in the one I hit, but I'm not gonna risk it. I'll just take half hour a little bit closer. So what I mean about the parking spaces, loads. Still on the M40 at the moment, coming up to about last five or six miles before I come off onto the M25. I've got 45 minutes left on driving time and I've got 80 miles to do and about an hour and a half, give or take, and it depends on traffic on the M25 before I reach my first destination over in Maidstone. The other two drops as well are all in the Kent region, so it's not too bad. Should be too long traveling between each one. Probably about a half hour drive, I reckon. Uh, the last drop is in Swanley in Kent. On the way back, I'll probably jump up the M25 ring road. Depends on traffic, actually. If it's really busy, I might divert around instead and come back up this way. Um, Two minds actually, yeah, I'm in two minds about that. Because Dartford, if we go through Dartford Tunnel on the way back up, and then jump on the M25, you get a lot of traffic, you try and get to the tunnel, don't you? So I could lose about a half hour at least, getting to the tunnel, the traffic builds up that much. And then up the M1, the services aren't as good as the M40. So what I might do is come back the way I've come now. I mean, let me know down in the comments, which way would you normally go? If you're going to like Kent, and obviously you're coming from up north, or you're going up north from Kent, which way would you normally go? Would you go across Dartford, or would you go around the ring road on the M25? Obviously it depends on the traffic, and uh, the time of day, etc. I'm hoping I'll have about three hours driving time left as well after the delivery. So I'll have about three hours to drive up. I'm not going to do a reduced rest today because I've done one last night. I've done a, I finished at half six last night and started at half four today. So that's a 10 hour rest. Which does go really fast, that doesn't it? It's by the time you go home, you changed have your tea, etc. Pretty much going to sleep and then waking up going straight back out, are you? I don't really like reduced stress too much, but unfortunately you have to do it sometimes. So if I park up tonight about five o'clock, I'll have a reduced, well not a reduced, sorry, I'll have a rest period of say 12 hours. Start work five o'clock in the morning, and then I can head back up towards Warrington for another two hours or so. Get back to Warrington for about half seven, obviously depending on traffic. And then I should be able to start the day then. I reckon it'll be quite, uh, quite local tomorrow. I think I'm gonna be on the trailer swaps. That normally happens if you have a night out. I'll be on the trailer swaps with um, our client over in St. Helens. So we're going to St. Helens to Haydock all day. And hopefully I can get signal as well so I can start uploading um, today's vlog onto YouTube for tomorrow night's viewing. And this is one of the main reasons why I started uploading the vlogs a day later. So for example, on a Monday, originally I was like working Monday and then I'll upload it that night. But then when I started having nights out, I couldn't upload it 
as uh, signal purposes. So at least it gives me that extra bit of time. Put a real nice Bentley there. So it gives me that extra time to do the prep and upload the um, Tuesday. Everything that I've done on Monday. If that makes sense. About three miles now until the M25. I absolutely love it when one of my subscribers notices me out and about and stuff like it. Proper makes my day up. So big shout out to Liam. Really nice guy. Yeah, he works for FTS as well. Just popped like someone walking over to my window, I was just sat here chilling out. It's like, you all right? <laughs> yeah, it's great, honestly. It's really good on meeting new people and stuff. Well, thank you very much for all the support, Liam. I really do appreciate it. And everybody else as well watches, I really do appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. So if you do see me out and about and you want a little chat or anything like that, just feel free to come over. It's an open door policy around here, guys. So if you see me out and about, don't be worried about interrupting anything or anything like that. Just come over, say hi. And honestly, it's great. Thank you. Now that's all over and done with my brakes, I've now got to drive another about an hour and a half, 71 miles to go. I've got to be on the M25 South Ring Road um, going down towards Maidstone now, so wish me luck going down there. Um, Liam was saying that they've had heavy rain around here as well because he's just came from the uh, Kent side of the M25 and it's quite flooded. So I'm hoping the traffic's not going to be too bad at this time of day, quarter past ten. Fingers crossed. Coming off now, the M26 for Junction 2, uh, for Gravesend. M25 Ring Road is actually really clear. It's pretty much been like this all the way down, at least non-stop anyhow, which is uh, a good surprise to be honest with you. Um, I'm due to get there about quarter to 12. And I've got to be honest with you, Today, is, it's been a long day so far, it really has. So I started work at half past four this morning. So I've probably nearly done eight hours already, hasn't it, to get down here. It's crazy. And I don't seem to be like stuck in any traffic or anything. I've always had a 45 minute break, adding on to that. But yeah, it just seems, say it's gone really, really quick. But it's took me a long time to get down, it really has. So I started at half past four this morning, did I know? And what time did I leave? It's probably quarter past five, I think, give or take. So then drive time, it's taking me about five and a half hours. Maybe six hours to drive down. Yeah, that's probably about right, that. Now we're in the yard, sorting the trailer and truck out, and then the hour break. So yeah, it's the two hours, yes, yeah, so we now six hours to drive down here. Um, still nine miles off though. <laughs> so it's not like I'm round the corner just yet. It's the big holiday in over there, left hand side. It looks like it's going to be A roads now, or B road actually. All the way down there, the B2016 is. 2106. No, not that way, is it? Straight on. Let's get it back onto the M25 there, I think. Going towards Seven Oaks if we do a right. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been there this way. I've been made stone in Kent and stuff like that quite a few times, but I've not come off at this junction, it's come down here. Oh my god, I just realised that. Look at the tree. <laughs> the trees fell over. And it's all flooded. What the hell's gone on around here? It's like quite a bit of bad weather around this part. Six. I don't really like driving anything under 
15 foot. I mean, if that truck's going down and the ones just came from here, yeah, we should be okay. Just gotta make sure my ride height is all set. Well, I am gonna do that, so I'm just gonna lower it down a little bit. Looks like it's been hit quite a few times. Just, just all right there, actually. I try and avoid anything under 15 foot, for being honest with you, but I've seen a couple of trucks coming out from underneath it. So I know I've got a little bit of room spare. I'm not on a double decker or anything. <coughs> Quite a few trucks behind me as well. I think they're doing the same. But yeah, I would be honest with you, I'd probably not have gone underneath that if I didn't see a truck coming from this direction. One thing you want to do is not hit a bridge. <laughs> it really is. It's not worth it. Do you know as well, if you actually hit a low bridge, there's a possibility of losing your license as well. God, these are not great roads either. <clears throat> That's the golf course. Uh, I've got eight miles to go, three miles on this road. God, these roads aren't the best. I don't like it when the hedges are too tall as well, so you can't see what's coming around the corner. An example of this truck. Pretty narrow roads as well, aren't they? Still a couple more miles to go, roads like this. Shoot it. side curtain unloads so ideally we want nice weather for it that's the way get piss wet through so let's get a bite ready One thing I do like about driving though is you get to see parts of the country you'd never normally see. Like Kent is supposed somewhere I would never really visit in the car, no driving around. But you know, you get to see everywhere pretty much all around Kent to be honest with you today. Three different areas of Kent. It's not somewhere I would normally choose to go on a holiday. Uh, but I do like to go various different places as well when I'm going on a holiday. I don't like to go to the same place all the time, such as Cornwall. I've been there probably about 15 times. 
or different places in Cornwall. I try not to go to the same place twice if possible. So last year we came down to Hastings, that was real nice. So I wonder what the um, east, southeast coast of England is like. I've never been down here in the summertime. Let me know in your comments, is it nice? Is it a nice place to visit in the summer? And where would you recommend visiting on the southeast coast? Rain's picking right up again, isn't it? Still got four miles to go. This is a seven ton weight limit, but access to the industry estate that I'm going to. Oh crap. <laughs> Gotta see this um, little stream here on the right hand side. It looks well flooded. It's like little bridges going to people's houses as well. Careful around here. Thought we'll go on that verge to the left. And I'm going across this little bridge. I'll take it across as clear if he's walking across. And we should be up here on the left hand side. them <laughs> I didn't think that Porsche was going to be slowing down enough to be honest with you I don't think they expect a big truck to be coming down here I don't know what it is as well south of England is probably less friendly for trucks than what the north is, definitely. Like access points and stuff. Like why would you have an industry estate down here in the middle of nowhere? You need deliveries going through there. I've been to so many places, like one in Hastings, and I was driving down roads probably half the size of this. It's absolutely ridiculous. Right down to 25. Like you can hear the roof from a cab hitting all these branches. <laughs> but we're overhanging a little bit. So I was keeping the camera rolling just in case you get any idiots come flying around the corner like that Porsche. Trying to get myself covered. Right, now it should be here on the left. Oh, Woodfalls. Bloody hell. Right, what number do I need? Let's have a quick check for this. Yeah, there's quite a few places here, and I've got a feeling it's not a big area, so I think it's going to be quite small inside. Um, unit 14 to 15. First delivery all done and complete over in Kent. I'm quite glad it was here not through there because that would have been a little bit of a pain to get around that left i don't think would be able to make it to be honest with you but what i've got to do now is reverse it a bit of a blind side reverse around that way so go forward a little bit first so I'm straighten it up a little bit i need to turn the steering wheel to the right so i can turn to the left Straighten up the trailer again. Make sure I'm clear of that car. Yep, perfect. And then we're still down to the right now. Just keep an eye on the trailer, make sure it doesn't kick out, hit one of the cars. See now it just swings out a little bit, doesn't it? Quite a big 
bit of a yard right behind me. So I'm just going to aim for there. Keep it a little bit turned to the trailer. And then bring the front of the cab back around. So I should be able to swing it around that way then. And one hit. There you go, just take your time. That's all you need to do. Take your time with it. So job number two is on the other side of Maidstone, near Roch... Where's that? Where's it? Is it Rochester? Yeah, Rochester. Cool. So it's up that way then. And it is 27 miles and we're looking for about an hour drive with traffic. Oh, it's an absolute nightmare around here it is. So tight the area. Um, the business unit I'm looking for, I actually drove into it and then came out thinking it wasn't there because the business name I've got is different from what they're actually called now. I've got the old business name for it. So, do a left in the here. And literally, I was in here a second ago. I've got to try and get back out. It's a tight one to get in and out. Yeah. Can't believe it was here in the right place. <laughs> First time round. Now what I'll do is park over on the right hand side, then I'll skift it over so we can get the other side. Just do one bit at a time. And I've got a total of five pallets for this one. Job number two done now, it's half past one. And the third drop is by Dartford Bridge. So it looks like I'm going over the Dartford Bridge, well, under the Dartford Tunnel, going northbound. But first, I've got to try and reverse it into that little gap so then I can do a left down that way. But before going backwards, I just need to make sure I'm off this fence a little bit so the trailer headboard, when I'm turning, doesn't knock it. quite a tight one this as well so just take your time get out if you need to have a quick look around but it's keeping on that car it's just came in as well make sure it don't park in the space that I need it probably has done and I've got a black car on my left hand side that's sticking out and it's keeping an eye on that bit as well Start turning, nice and slow. Got to careful these bollards here as well. Fence out already by looks of it. And be careful on the passenger side, headboard, was that swing and hit one of the cars parked up as well. Perfect. I'll swing to the left, pull back round, and the two bands. Oh, it's in a crappy situation. On that left hand side. Alright, here we go. Easy, okay? Don't make it easy for us, do they, at all? That's a pain, that place. So this is where it came from. 
So I know already what it's going to be like. Pretty tight. Hopefully the car's going to slow down, let me past. Get in front of where the bus is. Got the lot of taxis, aren't they, as well? I thought it was uh, queuing traffic at first. <laughs> Perfect. Please let me through as well. Going off the sat nav now is it's gonna be tricky this. It wants me to go straight ahead and through that lot. I don't think I really want to do that. It don't look HCV friendly. I'm not gonna lie. Um, even go around. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going down that. It's too tight. I don't trust it. You gotta go with your gut instinct sometimes, not just follow the sat nav. If I go this way, where I came from, I should be able to redirect me around. But if I went straight ahead there, that looked like it was going through like a little town centre, it's like a small town centre as well. I don't want to get stuck. <laughs> Especially if you got overhanging shops and stuff. Like the canopies. Put the foot down a little bit, come on. Get your traction. Good thing about about this area though is there's a lot of learner drivers. So the instructors are pretty much making the learner drivers stop and give space for me, which is good. A lot of people don't like to give way for trucks, do they? Yeah, this looks like a lot better area, doesn't it, to come down. Okay, I'm hoping it's starting to take me the right way. <laughs> looks like coming up towards like a pier of some sort. I'm not too sure where I'm going. I've not been this part of Kent yet. First time. Always makes it a little bit more nervous, doesn't it, when you've never been that place before. Right, come on. So it's the A289 currently on. Because the road's been pretty wet as well, I'm not going to be doing the full speeds. It's 50 down here, but I think 40 is all right. Oh, there you go, drop down to 40 anyhow. Straight across. The Medway Tunnel, I hope this isn't that bloody toll road. Start a toll road. Side of the M25 ring road, right off the junction as well. Here's been here once before to the place that I'm delivering to. Right, 
right way of the tunnel. Uh, it's the A289 still. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a tall road or anything. Just for being so close to London and Kent and stuff, normally they are really tall roads, especially if you're going underneath the water and stuff. First time over this way. Not bad little tunnel, free of charge to get it through as well. Always makes me more nervous as well when you don't see other trucks going down the same route as you. Call us big like, are you meant to be coming down here if you're in a truck? It's like double guessing yourself, don't you? So I'm still 18 miles away from the delivery point. And about 30 minute drive. Bloody hell, the rain is awful. Bad wind as well at the moment. That's not good, that. Not good. I need to try and get some fuel as well. Just been to one service station just now to do a quick fleet check if we have fuel. And they don't accept the car that I've got the UK fuel card. I need to try and find one to go accept them now. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Got about just under a quarter of a tank at the moment, so I've got about 120 miles so to get some, but I'd rather get it sooner rather than later. So next service station from Grass will be giving it a check as well, so getting more fuel. But yeah, the spray at the moment, bloody awful. It's the M25, it likes to bounce you around. Not exactly a flat motorway, and a bit of the wind as well. It's, it's not a pleasant drive at the moment. Last part of the afternoon, it's just been stop start, really. The rain, luckily, I've got the waterproofs with me to keep them always keeping them in the, the uh, truck. I'll we'll put the fog lights on as well, just so with the spray the water vehicles can uh, see me a little bit better should be another service station for the next like 15 miles I reckon and hopefully this one does accept it not sure what, too sure what the name of it is but uh, I think it's near Leverett the big one anyway on the M25. And I've got two and two hours and twenty minutes driving time left as well. But I need to pull over for the night. That's with an hour extended as well. I might just take a little bit of a break earlier. So I can extend my driving time then instead of like driving for an hour then pulling over and driving for another hour rather just have a break first before leaving. So then when I set off, I've got two hours then straight hit to get them off as much as I can. Yeah, it's not fun at the moment on this M25. It's a little bit bouncy the roads. Well, it's definitely safe to say I needed some fuel. Won't lie, I thought it was going to break down at one point. That is me done for the night. It's just hit half past six in the evening. I've parked up at the uh, services where I found the fuel. I've literally got like 15 minutes left on me extended time zone. So I've drove like nine hours and 15, no, nine hours and 45 minutes or so. Uh, been a long, long day. Tomorrow I'm going to start for 6 a.m. Get up about half five, nip over there, have a shower, get myself sorted out. So stay tuned for that for tomorrow's vlog. And um, yeah, hit the road for about six and then hopefully be at Warrington for around nine o'clock. Fingers crossed. 
fingers crossed then depends on traffic doesn't it getting up there but yeah hopefully nine o'clock half nine maybe gets my first job in, up in warrington so up here is my pillows they could go there just excuse the mess at the moment so that's my overnight bag that's my waterproof from earlier on and i got my sleeping bag up there as well i'll forward this out so it'll be like so so that's my bed for the night Oh, cozy and if you're wondering like why i'm using the light from the phone is because it's like really dark in here and for some reason these lights are not working uh my night light it's a bit intermittent at the moment i think it might be something to do with the bulbs but i'm not the only one with the same issue with that and there is everybody else parked up for the night just before i do go and like sort payment out open up the trailer because if you have the trailer open at night if anybody comes to try and steal anything they know it's empty just saves your curtains getting sliced up in the middle of the night oh god it's really dark down here isn't it it feels like there's a storm brewing the air's gone all over the place but anyway i'm gonna leave it there so if you did enjoy the video don't forget to like comment subscribe and i'll see you again next time bye for now